Hi, this is Advanced Music Theory, Lesson 4. We're going to be talking about seventh chords today. So in the past few lessons, we've been talking about triads, and triads are chords that are made up of three distinct notes. Now, seventh chords are going to add a fourth note to the mix, so we're going to be able to make four distinct note chords. Let's take a look at how they work. We're going to use the lesson from musictheory.net on the seventh chord, which is going to be down the lessons page in the chord section, seventh chords. So let's take a look. All right. So a seventh chord is basically uh, what happens when we combine a uh, triad and then we add a seventh scale degree on top of that, or an interval of a seventh above the root. Uh, so let's take a look at what that looks like. And by the way, we're going to cover all the different types of seventh chords, uh, or not all, but like the most common ones uh, today. There are going to be five types of seventh chords that are like really, really common. So uh, let's talk with, let's start with. Uh, showing you a major triad and then a minor seventh on top. And this is what we call the dominant seventh chord. And we abbreviate dominant seventh chord with a little seven at the bottom of the chord. So how do we build a dominant seventh chord? It's a major triad and a minor seventh on top of the root. Uh, so let's see how we do that building C dominant seven. So C E G is our major triad. If you remember, C, e, and now we are going to add a fourth note of a B flat, which is the minor seven from the root. Just remember that this is a minor seventh from the root, which in this case, C, dominant seven is the C. So the, the interval between C and B flat is a minor seventh. Okay. The other way you can think about it too is the seventh degree of the chord in this case, B flat is a minor third above the fifth degree of the chord, which is G natural. So in a dominant seventh chord, the seventh scale degree is going to be a minor third above the fifth scale degree. Okay. That's always going to be the case. Uh, even in situations where we start changing the inversion, which if you remember chord inversions from the triads, the chord inversions are also going to apply for seventh chords. And we'll, we'll do those in another lesson. Uh, but I just want you to start thinking about intervals in different ways. Think of minor seven from the root, but also think of minor third from the fifth degree. Okay. So let's keep moving. Uh, so B flat is the minor seventh. And when you combine them, we have a C dominant seventh chord. Let's take a look at what that sounds like. All right. So let's try to build a different one. This is going to be F sharp dominant seventh chord. So, uh, we start with the major triad, which in this case is F sharp, A sharp, C sharp. Then we're going to add a minor seventh from the root of F sharp, which brings us to E natural. And also do take note that E natural is a minor third above C sharp. So this is our C sharp. And a minor third is three semitones above one, two, three. Okay. So we put them together. We have F sharp dominant seventh chord. Let's listen to it. Cool. Uh, let's build one more dominant seventh. So this is going to be a flat. So a, a flat dominant seventh chord. We start with the A flat major triad, which is A flat, C natural, E flat. Also keep an eye on the right here on the keyboard so you can see where they're placed in the keyboard. Um, and finally, we add the minor seventh on top 
uh, of the root, which from A flat is G flat, is the minor seventh. Uh, combined, they form A flat dominant seventh chord. And let's listen. Cool. So as I'm playing this, notice that they have a very similar sound. Dominant seventh chords are going to sound uh, similar to one another, even if we start them in different notes. So let me play them back to back. The most defining like feature of like sonic feature of the uh, dominant seventh chord is that minor seventh degree or the the lowered seventh degree. Just keep that in mind. It's not a leading tone because it's not a half step below C. It's a whole step below C. So that's what makes that, that minor seven. So that, that's a good way to be able to identify it quickly by ear. Okay, let's talk about major seventh chord. So a major seventh chord is a different type of seventh chord that we get when we put a major triad and then we stack a major seventh instead of a minor seventh above the root. That gives us a different type of seventh chord. So we abbreviate that with M and a seven next to it. Let's build a C major seventh chord. So here we're going to start with the major triad just like before, but this time we're going to add a major seventh above the root, which in this case is B natural. It's no longer B flat. That was a minor seven is B natural major seven. And also notice that this time this, B natural is the leading tone to C because they're separated by a half step. I'm saying that now because I want you to start thinking about that when you listen to it so that you can hear the, the difference uh, between dominant seven and major seventh. So let's listen to major C major seven. Cool. Let me play back to back with dominant seven so that you hear it. So that minor seven, and here, do, si, we have a major seven there. All right, let's take a look at F sharp major seventh chord. Let's try to build this a little bit more quickly. So we have F sharp, A sharp, and C sharp. That's your major triad. Let's stack a major seventh above. That's our leading tone, which is E sharp, and that gives us F sharp major seventh chord. Let's listen. Cool. Once again, notice that leading tone, that major seventh interval, and here that the leading tone really wants to like lean towards the F sharp because it's only a half step apart. Okay. We're going to skip A flat major, but I encourage you to do it at home. We're going to move on to the minor seventh chord. So the minor seventh chord is what we get when we stack a minor triad and then we put a minor seventh above the root. So now we've moved on to minor triad below versus major triad. So we abbreviate that with a lowercase m and a seven. So let's build a C minor seventh chord. So here we start with the minor triad, which is C, E flat, G. Just remember that now we have an E flat because that gives us our minor third or our minor triad. And then we're going to stack a minor seventh above, which is B flat. So here the main difference between the C dominant seven chord and the C minor seventh is going to be this E flat, but the B flat is the same. Let's listen to C minor seventh chord. Cool. So let's do one more example. F sharp minor seven. 
We're just going to start with our minor triad, which is F sharp, A natural, C sharp. And then we're going to add the minor seventh on top, which is E natural. And we're going to listen to what that sounds like. Let's listen to the minor seventh chords back to back so that you hear the similarities between them. Cool. So the, def the defining feature, sonic feature of this chord is the minor third at the bottom and the minor seventh on top. So just keep that in mind. We're going to skip this example for the sake of time. I don't want this video to get too long because there's quite a few of these uh, seventh chords. But I do encourage you to spend some extra time with this at home so you get comfortable and try to build your own chords starting from any note. All right. So we're now getting into the diminished seventh chord. So remember that we had diminished triads and we're going to have diminished seventh chords as well. We're going to start with the half diminished which happens when we have a diminished triad and a minor seventh on top. We write diminished triads with the abbreviation with a circle with a slash on through going through it and a seven. So let's build a C half diminished seventh chord. We're going to start with the diminished triad, which is Remember, a diminished triad is stacked minor thirds on top of each other. So we start with C, E flat. That's our first minor third. And then E flat, G flat is our second minor third. Remember that minor thirds are three semitones. So one, two, three. That's our first minor third. And then one, two, three. That's our second minor third. And finally, we add the minor seventh from the root, which for C, that would be B flat. B flat is the minor seventh above C. And we're going to have a C half diminished seventh chord. So I'm going to skip the next examples, uh, but I do want to play them so that you hear different half diminished seventh chord so that you hear that they sound similar. Cool. So just note that the, the most recognizable sonic feature of this chord is the diminished fifth, which is the first and fifth degree, and then the minor seventh on top. Okay, let's do the last triad, uh, the last seventh chord, sorry, which is going to be the diminished seventh chord or the full diminished seventh chord, which is more commonly known as that. So we had a half diminished and full diminished. And you're going to see that it's called full diminished because this time we're going to put a diminished triad at the bottom. But instead of a minor seven, we're going to put a diminished seven. So when we say diminished, we usually, the term diminished usually means we're going to lower or we're going to shorten the distance of a, a, a interval by a half step. So the diminished triad is called that because we go from a perfect fifth to a diminished fifth. I just mentioned that before with the previous example. Uh, the diminished seventh is the same thing. We take a minor seven and then we lower that or we make that interval shorter by a half step. So we go from minor seven to diminished seven. So we basically take away one semitone, one half step from that distance. And that gives us a diminished seventh. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So, oh, and first of all, the, uh, the abbreviation for the, a fully diminished chord is an open circle without the slash and the seven next to it. So C diminished seventh chord. Let's start with the diminished triad, C, E flat, G flat. And then we add the diminished seventh above. So if you remember in the previous example, we had B flat was our minor seventh, 
but this time the diminished seventh is lowering that note by a half step so that's why we have a double b flat so b double flat the second flat just lowers the b flat by another half step and i want you to look at the keyboard if we do b double flat we go from b natural here b flat one half step down and diminished brings us to b double flat which is the same pitch as a natural they have uh, different enharmonic spelling but they're the same pitch a natural and b double flat are the same pitch just different enharmonic spelling okay so when we put that together we're going to listen to that so the most easy way to recognize the diminished seventh chord is that all of the intervals are going to be minor thirds actually so do me or e flat minor third g flat minor third b double flat minor third so all of those intervals are minor thirds and that's the in, the interesting thing about the fully diminished chord is that it's always every interval is going to be a minor third even uh in different inversions so that's just one way to quickly recognize that chord so I'm gonna skip some of the other examples, uh, but you should go through them at home so that you get more practice with them. And finally, I wanna show you guys this chart. This chart is ha has all the different combinations of triads and the seventh intervals above that make the different types of seventh chords. So just, and the abbreviations as well on the right. So just refer to this chart where you're learning this so that you can, um, kind of review how to build them and listen to the chords a lot because preparing your ear for to hear these chords is just as important as understanding how to build them okay guys uh i know this was a long lesson uh you know the seventh chords are very important and you know there are quite a few to cover uh but i encourage you guys to continue to practice this on your own see you guys later